It's all a part of that like, Easy Riders and Raging Bulls era, a ragtag group of younger filmmakers like, you know, Francis Ford Coppola and George Lucas and Peter Bogdanovich, all those guys were getting the chance to, to make really interesting movies. Well, I think it started with five easy pieces, the same producers. I was a kid and I had a great agent of Robert Raison at that time. And I just went along with the wave. We rehearsed for two weeks before we shot a foot. So they were together for a week in LA and a week in Archer City, in Wichita Falls, actually. The location gave them a lot of authenticity because they were in the town that Larry McMurtry wrote about. And when you're on a distant location, there's no distractions. You're not going to go to the movies. You're not going to have dinner with friends. You're going you're, you're to hang out. And they did, and they all bonded very strongly. When we got down there, we were isolated in that little town. And it was like, we're all staying at the Ramada Inn, you know, and it's, it's uh, we're close, we're doing a lot of steamy rehearsals in the presidential suite of the Ramada Inn in Wichita Falls, and it, it just came to life, and it felt so real to me. I, I was in love with everybody, every other actor on the set. I think the actors were awfully good, the, 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 the dialogue's awfully good. McMurtry's the best regional dialogue writer since Mark Twain, I think. Generally speaking, I love black and white films because it removes distractions. Eye color, skin color, hair color, and so the, the focus is more on the acting and the dramatic aspects of it. That's one reason. The other thing is it's easier to convey the period if it's a black and white period, which the early 50s was still sort of black and white. It was Robert Surtees, who was the unsung hero of it. I mean, he, he photographed that. And without Robert Surtees, it would have never looked that way. This, for me, this was somewhat of a painful experience, to tell you the truth. It was very close to what I was going through at home, the divorce of my mom and my dad. And what's that song, Ringo Starr? You know, I'll play the part of a guy who's sad and lonely, and all I got to do is act naturally. That pretty much, that pretty much puts it into a walnut shell for you. Well, when I first read the part of J.C., I was very insulted that someone would think that I was like that. Uh, I, I did see it was a great part, and I was not going to turn it down. But later on in life, uh, you know, I realized I was a lot more like J.C. than I ever want to imagine, because I did do terrible things to men without any thought about the consequences, and I broke a lot of hearts. And I think at a certain point in my life, after I'd had my heart broken plenty of times, that I, w I had been more like J.C. And I, and, but sometimes, you know, you, you see yourself in something, but you never want to admit it. Sometimes it takes a little few years of wisdom. I'm not like J.C. anymore. Oh, too bad. The power to seduce was more important than, than anything. Because if you see, J.C. doesn't really have a very good time sexually. She kind of gets the short end of the stick, so to speak. I played about 300 songs of the era, of the period, and chose the ones that I would thought were right for the scenes. and ones that I thought I wouldn't get tired of hearing. If you had a movie score, you know how scores so often you look back at an old film and you go, oh, I can tell when that was made. But uh, Peter was brilliant with his use of music, the original music of the period. And often I use music as a counterpoint. Obviously, if it's a sad scene, I didn't use a sad song, I had an up-tempo song, and vice versa. The town was the main character. I mean, and everybody in it was just like the town. Everybody had their own life. They were unhappy where they were, no matter if they were rich or poor, uh, regrets. I think the only character in the whole film that was really happy through the whole film was my brother Sam, because he really didn't think much. He was just happy to sweep the street. It's ironic that in life, to go through a scene where you actually have somebody die and you hold him, and then to do it in real life, makes you really wonder about who we are and, What is this experience that we're living? Uh, that's, that's the hardest thing for me, but um, I know he's with us and he did some great films and good kid. I loved him. You know, I was just, I was born the year it went to the theaters and uh, yeah, so it's one of those things where, you know, I probably would have been 14 or 15 and really just 
seem like a great movie and then just certain things like it coming from a novel and being black and white you might not think it's the kind of thing that would appeal to a kid like that but yeah it was just really had a, a effect on me. I, could, I was felt like I was the luckiest person alive to have had this opportunity to be in a film like this to have my first acting teacher be Bogdanovich and to have actors of this caliber play opposite I mean I think I had the right look at the right time and um, like I say, I think I'm the luckiest person <laughs> alive to have had an opportunity to be a part of something like that.